disgrace is spending at thy will. But now my cousin Hamlet and my son, a little more than kin and less than kind, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy night and come off, and let thine eye look like a thing on Denmark. Do not fret with thy valiant lord. Seek for thy noble father. Thou knowest tis common not all our tastes die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam? Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath. No, nor the fruitful river of the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief, that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within, which path a show, he's with the trappings and suits of woe. Too sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. And the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term. But but to perceive her in obstinate condolement it is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. For what we know must be and is as common as any the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we in our peevish opposition take it to heart? Fie, tis a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason most absurd, whose common theme is death of fathers. We pray you, throw it to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as a father, for let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne. And with, and with no less nobility of love, and that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart toward you. For your intent, going back to school in Wentford, your most retrograde to our desire, we beseech you, beg you, to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayer, Simon. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart, in grace whereof. No just and health that Denmark drinks today, but the great cannon to the clouds shall tell, and the kings rouse the heavens all brute away. Respeaking earthly thunder, come away. Oh, that this too, too sullied flesh would melt, thaw and resolve itself into a dew, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well, Horatio. Or I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. But what make you from Wittenberg? Horatio, Marcellus? My good lord. I am very glad to see you. Good even, sir. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I would not hear your enemy say so, nor shall you do mine ear that violence. To make it truster of your own report against yourself? I know you are no trant. But what is your affair in Elsinore? I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed her time. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I have met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen that day, Horatio? My father! Methinks I see my father! Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. Saw? Who? My lord, the king your father. The king my father! Seasons your admiration for a while within a tent ear, so I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear! Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead vast in the middle of the night, been thus encountered, a figure like your father, armed at point exactly cap of feet, appeared before them, and with solemn march goes slowly and stately by them. Thrice he walked by the, their oppression and fear surprised eyes. With his treasure lion's length, whilst, whilst they dissolved, almost the jelly, with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful sorcery in part they did. And I, with them the third night, kept watch, whereas they had delivered both in time, form, in time, form of the thing, 
Each word made true and good. The apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? My lord. My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. Yet once methought it lifted up its head and it did address itself to motion, like as I would speak. But even then the morning cock grew loud, and at the sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true, and we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight? I, we do, my, my lord. lord. I will watch tonight. Perchance twill it walk again. I warrant you will. So fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our, Our duty, duty to your, your honor. honor. Your loves is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms? All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come? Till then sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth o'erwhelm them to men's eyes. <laughs>